Hi, my name is Matt and I'd like to welcome you to this Zimniak video which is part of our ITIL Specialist Drive Stakeholder Value course. And in this video we'll be looking at the Service Level Agreement Management Practice. So let's start off by looking at its purpose, which is to set clear business-based targets for service levels and to ensure that delivery of services is properly assessed, monitored and managed against these targets. And in terms of ITIL 4 versus ITIL 3, the key part of that really is business-based targets. So there's a big emphasis within ITIL 4 on having business-based targets rather than technology-focused targets. It's obviously often easier to have technology-focused targets because they're easier to define and easier to measure, but they're, they're further away from the value, and obviously our focus is on the value, so we want our targets, our SLA, to be close to the value, so there's business-based targets. The management practice helps to set and manage a shared view of the quality of services between the service provider and the service consumer. And we've seen that in the previous videos on the agree step that we want that shared view. And it's, as I said right at the beginning, that's key to having that solid foundation for a successful relationship that co-creates value. And you can see the key activities there in figure 2.1. And uh, I would just say, yes, yeah, so for that in terms of, you know, negotiate, agree, understand and report, improve, monitor. Those those two lists of three, so before the agreement and after the agreement, so definition and delivery, likely to come up in the exam, just simply because it's, you can see it's easy to make, write an exam question around those, you know, with, for a multiple choice exam question where there are four possible answers, you've got three possible answers there, we make one up and say which one isn't, and then you're there, so they, they could well come up. Right, so we're going to, as we have done with other management practices, we're going to look at the success factors, starting with establishing a shared view of target service levels with customers. And... As you said before, there's there's the difference between a tailored service and an out-of-the-box service. So with a tailored service, there's significant flexibility in target service levels and you know what we're going to include, whereas out-of-the-box is much more the suppliers defined it and the consumers kind of picking off a list, aren't they? You know, picking off a menu and saying, yeah, I'll have that one, I won't have that one, or I want gold level service or silver level service, however it's packaged, but much more the consumer picking. Establish a shared view of a tailored service, create a service specification that satisfies all, all, all stakeholders on both sides or as close to that as you can get. All metrics are defined as agreed service level should have a clear approach to measurement and reporting. Yeah, so again, we talked about that before. We need to have an unambiguous way of measuring them and that needs to be agreed at the point where we, we're measuring or defining what the target is. For tailored services, defining this approach can be part of the initial target service level negotiation. For out-of-box services, they're usually predefined. Um, so continuing establishing a shared view we have figure 2.2 and 2.8. So again, it's showing the difference. So we're starting with consumer needs. We are narrowing down to service level documented in the SLA. But the difference is for a tailored service, we go expectations data by consumer and then agreed service requirements. For out-of-box services, we go service quality specified by the service provider, basically by service architects and designers, and then service quality announced by the service provider. So out of the box services, in simple terms, service provider led, tailored services, more service consumer led or created together. 
we can look at uh, different service quality aspects as listed in table 2.2 and this is very much a checklist i won't read every single one out but you can see the different aspects of functionality availability performance timeliness user support accuracy and user experience and again there for user experience number and frequency of user errors returns to a previous step interface help requests interrupted service action so they are things that we can measure directly on a digital service and then obviously we've got the the other examples there for you that you can read as well and we need to think about the ITIL principles so again the ITIL principles would apply focus on value so that's very much you know, business focused SLAs not technology focused start where you are so if we can base it on a previous agreement or a sim similar agreement that may help speed up the process progress iteratively with feedback yeah I talked about having it flexible being able to change it because requirements change but maybe don't try and get everything in there at, at the start build up gradually and particularly if if you've got an agile approach to service delivery where you're not delivering all the service in one go just define the SLA so as you deliver a new bit of the service define and agree the SLA for that bit of the service don't feel you've got to nail everything down in one go collaborate and pr promote visibility clearly key to having that shared understanding of what the service is going to be think and work holistically so maybe not just about the service itself but how the service interacts to other services and um, to give that holistic view keep it simple and practical as we said try and avoid jargon and make everything clear so it's clear to everyone it's easy to understand and optimize and automate again that measuring customer experience is a great example of doing that next success factor overseeing how the organization meets the defined service levels through the collection analysis storage and reporting of the relevant metrics for the identified services so the service provider should control the actual quality of services from three main perspectives the achieved service level, so do we meet the SLA, but also user satisfaction with the service, customer satisfaction with the service. And given that we also talk about sponsors, I'd add, really add in there sponsor satisfaction with the service, which might be slightly different. But definitely, you know, we talked about satisfaction as opposed to just meeting the SLA. But again, you know, user satisfaction and customer satisfaction often aligned, but not always. It might be that the customer's happy because they're getting the value they expect from the service, they're getting the outcomes, but the user isn't very happy because it's not working for them on a day-to-day -day basis. Alternatively, the user might be happy because it's working for them on a day-to-day -day basis, but the customer's unhappy because they're not getting the benefits they thought they were going to get. So we need to measure all three. And uh, yeah, we need to collect it and report it. For, for all of them. Next success factor, performing service reviews to ensure that the current set of services continues to meet the needs of the organization and its customers. So again, this is very much the world changes. So it, is the service still meeting? And again, we establish that shared view of quality and the value enabled we can initiate necessary service improvements and typically when I've done this when I've had these reviews often as this is so if you've got interval based re reviews not more frequently than a month not less frequently than a quarter certainly when I've done it typically a monthly but if the customer's satisfied if the service is performing well we're meeting SLAs then the thing they want to talk about is improving the service not because you're not meeting the service but they just want more they want better they want to buy more from you they want you to do more for them because they're happy that's where you want to be that's the ideal situation from a service provider point of view and that's what we focus on equally it might be event based so if something goes wrong a major event a major incident then 
we may need to have a service review but it might just be a change of business needs so every again everything's going fine but the customer's got a major event in in its business something has changed and therefore they want to change the service or expand it or reduce it or whatever it might be change it in some way uh, formal meetings are common for all tailored services and you know more expensive services the more the consumer is paying the service provider the more likely you'll have face-to-face -face formal meetings for out-of-the-box services and the less money you're paying the less likely that is to occur and the final success factor capturing and reporting on improvement opportunities including performance against defined service levels and stakeholder satisfaction so this is very much if we're not meeting SLAs then clearly we need to improve and make sure we are so we need to do that if we are meeting the SLAs if the customer is not satisfied then we need to understand what we need to do to make the user or customer satisfied if we're meeting the SLAs and the user satisfied and the customer satisfied we still want to improve we still want to get better we still want to provide more services so we, we're still doing this it's just a question of what's driving it really and uh, and I've talked about this before so whatever's driving it needs to be transparent and we need to close the loop so it needs to be clear to the customer what opportunities and what improvements we're trying to make and that we not only initiate them but we actually effectively implement them and if and it is an improvement so that things do get better we do create co-create more value from the service so that's where where the focus is with that okay so that brings us to the end of this video on service level management management practice i hope you've enjoyed it i hope you found it useful and i hope you will join me in the next video until you see me again have a great day